Falcon warns of a new dubious poster boy for Dem care. Glenn Beck attacks his family, while Rush Limbaugh calls his message a sob story. If you thought the right couldn't sink any lower in their hysteria over health care reform, they just did. Their latest target, an 11-year-old boy. Marcellus Owens, a fifth grader from Seattle, speaking at a news conference alongside his grandmother and senior Senate Democrats, sharing the story of his mother, Tiffany. My mom was diagnosed with pulmonary hypertension in 2006. She missed so much work that she lost her job, and along with her job, she lost her health care. And losing her health care ended up um, causing her her life, and I wanted to finish her fight for health care. So I don't want any other kid to go through the pain that our family has gone through. Tiffany Owens died at the age of 27 of pulmonary hypertension. And as Media Matters reports, her story and her son's telling of it sent the right-wing noise machine into overdrive. The website Newsbusters calling the 11-year-old a spokesman for a liberal lobby, attacking his grandmother, Gina Owens, for her work with the Washington Community Action Network, a consumer advocacy group. Glenn Beck taking that attack questioning Ms. Owens' motives by attacking her group and the issues it supports. There are pesky phrases in that one that we should point out. Social justice, shared community, and collective responsibility. And let's not forget, truly democratic society. Well, we're not a democratic society. Um, I think that was the Soviet Union. I believe it's the Democratic Socialist Republic in China as well. Beck then went after the group that helped Marcellus and his grandmother get to Capitol Hill. The trip was paid for by Health Care for America Now. That's the George Soros-funded, Barack Obama-approved group fighting for health care. Since all of these groups are so concerned and so involved now, may I ask, where were you when Marcella's mother was vomiting blood? Wasn't this the perfect opportunity to help provide a decent quality of life for all? Or at least for one? You had somebody in your own ranks that knew that her mother knew. Dare I ask, where was Grandma? Desperate to catch up with Beck, Michelle Malkin and Rush Limbaugh also joined in. To refresh your memory, the pair also targeted 12-year-old Graham Frost and his family in 2007. Graham gave a Democratic radio address, objecting to President Bush's veto of a bill that expanded S-CHIP, the state children's health insurance program. That led to Malkin to call his parents spoiled brats and Limbaugh to question the family's finances. In the case of Marcellus Owens, Malkin called him a human kitty shield for the Dems, with Limbaugh echoing that sentiment. Now, this is unseemly, exploitative, an 11-year-old kid being forced to tell this story all over just to benefit the Democrat Party and Barack Obama. And I would also say this to Marcellus Owens. Well... Your mom would have still died because Obamacare doesn't kick in until 2014 if they sign it this year. Really, Rush? That's what you would say to an 11 year old kid about his dead mother? Come on, Rush. Tell your listeners the truth on this one. Even you would never say that to an 11 year old. I know being mean is part of your business model, and I know it's easy to say things you regret in three hours of live radio. But now, you really should do what your dead mother, Millie, taught you to do in a situation like this. Apologize. Come on, Rush. Tell Marcellus you're sorry. You saw him, Rush. He's a classy kid. He'll accept your apology. You just have to be big enough to say you're sorry. Go ahead, Rush. You can do it. It's not that hard. Make Millie proud of her little boy. 
Time now to call in the Washington editor of The Nation magazine, Chris Hayes. Good evening, Chris. What, what can possibly be gained in American politics by attacking an 11-year-old kid who lost his mother? I missed the lesson where that's good politics. Well yeah, I mean, I don't know how much they're thinking strategically and going after him. I think it's a reflex that the, the, the kind of attack mode is always the prime instinct, particularly for people like Malkin and Beck and Limbaugh. And I also think, to be honest, I think these are compelling stories. And I think that putting a human face on, on what's going on, what the stakes of health care are, is threatening. It, it, it really makes them uncomfortable. So I think that there, there's, there's both a kind of just knee-jerk reaction where they just want to destroy anyone that stands in their way, but also there's an implicit recognition of the sort of strategic vitality of a message that actually focuses on real human beings. It does seem like the anecdotes are, are driving them crazy somehow, that the true stories of health care reform, of the holes in the health care system, of the way people are right. being victimized in the health care system, just drive them nuts. And in, in politics, you know, you, you tend to use each other's weapons. If you tell a story to illustrate your point, I'm going to tell a story to illustrate my point. But, you know, they've got, what, uh, 40, 43 million people on Medicare in this country, uh, close to 50 million on Medicaid in this country. They can't find one person in that group to come out and say my government health insurance is bad my government health insurance has failed me they can't find one right well i mean look they, they don't want to do that because when you when you look at the demographics of the conservative movement and of the republican party it's a lot of people who are on medicare and and so the, i i think that they they've been very worried about being seen as attacking medicare and all this that's why we've gotten this weird jujitsu about you know government hands off of medicare etc i don't know why they haven't gone out i mean look there's a lot of people out there people are discontent about a lot of things but i i, I think at this point they're, because they're not trying to pr proactively offer anything, their mode, the rhetorical mode, is just to, to raise questions and to point out, uh, you know, errors and to go after people in the most sort of brutal ad hominem way to try to, try to kill the bill. There's nothing other than that. Whatever comes into view is what they attack. You know, I'm getting the feeling by this kind of desperate attack. I mean, I, I don't know Rush Limbaugh, but there's no way he would say that to an 11-year-old. He knows he wouldn't say it to an 11-year-old. And he, and he just blorts that out on the radio. I, combining that with what we saw, a few hundred maybe uh, Tea Partiers is the best that Dick Army and his machine and all of that uh, support system he has to organize. That's the best he could do uh, on right. the lawn of the Capitol today. It, I'm getting a feeling of, of the, uh, the emotional air going out of the tires of, of opposition here. I, look, I, I think I think you're you're putting your finger on something. I mean, if you look at the polling data, we've seen the popularity of the bill begin to move up, and it's actually you know the, the kind of inflection point was right after the Scott Brown election. Since the president has sort of gotten out front, since there have been less process stories, and since they have also focused the message on what the stakes are for actual people and what the current system allows to happen, the cracks that millions of people fall through, all of those things have pushed up the approval of the bill. And so I think that there's been a real messaging improvement, and I think the right recognizes that, and, then, and they're, and they're uh, trying to fight back against it. And I also think they realize that, it, that this is probably going to be passed. Chris Hayes of The Nation, thank you for looking inside yourself and somehow finding the decency <laughs> to come to the defense of an 11-year-old boy whose mother died. <laughs> I'm a stand-up guy, you know. Thanks, Chris.